Shouldn't have taken a bite just then. <laughs> Eating this pizza. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. What are those videos called where people just eat mook, things on mook camera? Bong. We're doing yeah. a mukbang. on the restricted section and today we are going to do the pizza tag yes yeah, so we have some homemade pizza here that Megan's husband Joey yes. made for us thank you Joey thank it's you delicious. Joey he makes delicious pizza mm -hmm. and we're drinking some Dublin Porter from Guinness I got this in a variety pack. And it's only 3.8% alcohol by volume. Mm hmm So if you want a low alcohol beer, here you go. Or I could just go to Oklahoma where everything's 3%. So that's true. I have a weird law in Oklahoma where beer has to be 3% or something. Maybe they've changed it since I was there, but but yeah. Yeah, this is this is pretty good, but it does have a kind of a weird. It does. It's like a weird bitter, bitter aftertaste. Mm -hmm. But it's aight. It's aight. All right, and this we were tagged on this by Literary Gladiators, mm -hmm. and um, this is one of Josh's foodie tags, which I love his foodie tags. Mm -hmm. They're a and lot of he, fun. Yeah, and um, also I felt honored that we were ta tagged by him in one. Yeah, I was super honored. I think this is the first time he's tagged us in one. So, <laughs> so cheers, Josh. So excited about Thank that. You. Cheers. And this was, he adapted this from the original, which was by, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce this, so I apologize, but Las Puertas de la Literatura? Right? Yes. Yeah. But we'll put mm -hmm. Literary Gladiators and the original person's down below. <laughs> videos down below. Right, right. Yes. Right. So, let's get into this tag. Yeah. And this pizza. And this pizza. Um, so the first one is cheese, a simple work that possesses much more depth to it. And I chose The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like this book is, I think it's maybe even considered like a middle grade, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know I read it in middle school, and I think a lot of other people read it in middle school. And it's a really short book, so, you know, it's pretty pretty easy, pretty simple, but um, it definitely has a lot of depth to it. A lot of themes of, um, I don't know, it's been so long since I read this. That's a really <laughs> pretty copy of it. Yeah, I love this copy, but, um, yeah, like, survival, there's more to it than that. I don't, I can't remember, but it's got some, some deep stuff in there. <laughs> some deep shit. Deep shit. Um, I said One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey because it's written very simply and the narrator is considered like simple but then there's a lot of like social commentary stuff in here about the way that the mentally ill are treated, um, about racism, so there's a lot of like deep stuff in here. Yeah. Alright, next is Pepperoni, a well-known continuously popular work. Um, I said Game of Thrones, because everybody knows this, and it's an HBO show now, um, so I feel like that kind of even brought it more notoriety, mm -hmm. but, and it's been pretty continuously popular. I think this first book was published in, let's see, 96, so, yeah. Yeah. And I said Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, because I hear people talk about this on booktube quite a lot. Mm hmm uh, maybe not quite as much recently as in the recent past, but for some reason this is a classic that gets talked about quite a lot. And so, yeah. Yeah. I so like Jane Eyre. popular. Pretty good. Um, the next one is Mushroom, a textbook that you found engaging. I hate mushrooms. <laughs> I don't care for them either. Um, I chose a book that it's not, I don't know, I'm not sure that it was meant to be a textbook, but when I read it, it was as a textbook for a philosophy class that I took in high school, and that is the book Sophie's World by Justine Gard Garter. I probably pronounced that wrong, sorry. But this is kind of an intro to philosophy through the eyes of a little girl. Hmm. 
So she's learning about all these famous philosophers. Hmm. And it was pretty interesting, pretty good. That's pretty cool. Said, um, Becoming Naturally Therapeutic by Jacqueline Small. And that was just a book about like the different traits of a good therapist. And it was actually like a really good like self-inventory book for me. So yeah, it helped me kind of take a look at myself and figure out where I was doing well and like what areas I was lacking. And it was a good like self-reflective book. It was very engaging. All right, next is Sausage, a literary work that has just the right dose of a particular genre. I chose The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon uh, because I felt like this had just the right amount of horror and just, it was dark and gothic and creepy um, and it was just beautifully written and I loved it. And I chose The Rules of Attraction by Brent Easton Ellis. I felt like this one had just the right amount of comedy in it. You know, it's kind of a fucked up book. <laughs> and the characters are just all horrible. But, I, I mean, there was quite a lot of, of comedy and funny stuff in here that I think balanced everything out really well. Okay. The next one is Extra Cheese. A work that was longer than it needed to be. Should we say it at the same time? Let's do it. A, a Little Life, Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Oh, Yeah, that book just went on and on. Like two about, pages too I, long. Yeah, I think that it was around probably the 500 and so or so page mark that I was like, when is this book going to end? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> like, fuck, are you done come yet? On. Come on. <laughs> Leave this poor man alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next question is Garden, a favorite literary vegetarian, writer, or character. I said the Brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park, because it's a Vegisaurus Rex. <laughs> and I said Bigwig from Watership Down, because I love Bigwig, and he's mm -hmm. a bunny, which means he's an herbivore, mm -hmm. so vegetarian. Chewing that grass. <laughs> the next one is Grandma. Um, which is a work that makes you think of your grandparents. I said The Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Um, not for any specific, like, actual memory that I have of, of reading this with my grandparents or anything, but just because my grandparents on both side, sides of the family were farmers, mm -hmm. like, this is, this books just kind of remind me of, of being on the farm at my grandparents' house and kind of the, the simple life, as they call it, yeah. you know, that kind simple of thing. Life. So, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say probably anything by Nicholas Sparks, because my grandma loves Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> I don't, but she does. Um, and my grandpa really, really is into National Geographic, so, which is not a book, but is a magazine. <laughs> All right, next is Hawaiian, a work with a tropic atmosphere. Um, I said the Southern Reach trilogy because Area X becomes kind of tropical. Um, yeah, this is a really good trilogy, but the ending is not very satisfying, so bummer. Wah, wah. And I said The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells, set on an island in the Pacific. Nice. So rather tropical, quite tropical e atmosphere there. There we go. Lots of weird animals running around. Lots of big mosquitoes. <laughs> Anchovy, a work that you feel you and most people dislike. I kind of had a hard time with this one. Um, it was I couldn't really think of a work that I feel like is universally hated mm -hmm. um, that I've read anyway. And uh, so I went with The Silent Wife by A.S.A. Harrison. Mm -hmm. um, everyone in our book club hated this book. A big <laughs> We read it for our book club. Horrible. And it does have pretty mixed reviews on Goodreads. It has an average of like 3.3, I think, which isn't mm -hmm. terrible, but it's not great. And I just hated it. I thought it was just a piece of shit. <laughs> it was. It was horrible. It was boring as fuck. And like... 
Both oh. characters were super boring, and it was just... It was awful. Yeah. Um, I said Bowie by Wendy Lay. It was a biography of David Bowie. Um, and most people, I feel like, hated it because I think it really oversimplified David Bowie. And it turned him into, like, the sum of his sexual exploits. Like, he, it made him... It just made him that. Like, mm -hmm. it didn't talk about much more than that. When I think he's a much more, like, complex person than all that. Yeah. So... Okay, next is Stuffed Crust, a work that grabbed your attention at first sight. And for me, that was Girl Factory by Jim Crusoe, just because the cover really got my attention. This book was bad. It was not good. <laughs> but the cover, I thought, was very interesting. And I bought it at a library sale, so I paid, like, less than a nickel for it. Yeah, so, so not much of a loss. No harm, no foul. And I said... A Clockwork Orange, or this particular copy of A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, because, I mean, it's just really mm -hmm. cool copy. Very cool. I had definitely already heard of it. I had seen the movie, but I saw this on Book Outlet, I think, or was it Book Depository? I don't remember. One of those. And I was like, I need that. Pretty cool. So, it's a good copy. Yeah. Alright. The next one is... <sighs> Um, best of the best. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Um, this kind. <laughs> uh, pepperonis and green peppers are my favorite toppings. I like a thicker crust like this. Yeah, and cheese. And if I'm feeling real generous, I'll add um, onions and tomatoes. Mm. Sometimes black olives. Yum. Oh, we had Yum. black olives. We could put those on there. It's cool. Uh, mine is this kind, which is smoked sausage and green peppers and no cheese. Mm -hmm. And a thicker crust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is delicious. And if I was going to, like, choose a, a pizza delivery place, Pizza Hut. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut's my number one. Yeah. I like Pizza Hut a lot. Yeah. It's just delicious. I don't know. Pretty good. A lot of people seem to not like Pizza Hut, but they're my fave. Yep. I like them. I also like Domino's. Domino's is pretty good. I feel like their crust is like too garlicky now though. Mm. And they're also more expensive. They are. And then last question is Pizza Party. Who do we tag? Who do we tag? Who, who would we want to have a pizza party with? Oh, so many people. A lot of people. So many people. Um, definitely the Drunken Library. Yeah, definitely. For sure. And easily Ben Sanders. Easily. Mm -hmm. He might have already been tagged in this, I'm not sure, but... Hmm. If you're not, then you are now. Yes. Um, who else hasn't been tagged who we want to have a pizza party with? Hmm. Um, what about the ladies over at Game of Tones? Definitely. I'd have some pizza with them. Or Toadsy pizza with them. <laughs> yep. And the Book Brood? Definitely would eat pizza, pizza with them. them. Mm-hmm. That's probably enough people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> we just could keep going with people we want to have pizza party with. We want to eat pizza with all of you. Yeah. We need to have a big book two pizza party. That'd be awesome. And I bet you we could get my husband to make us some pizzas. Probably. That'd be a lot of pizzas though, man. <laughs> he really likes it. He likes he to like hair made this dough. Mm-hmm. He handmade the dough and everything. He did. He tossed it. He was throwing it in the air <laughs> like a champion. I can't do that. Then drop it on my face. Me too. Yep. Yes, but that's our pizza book tag. Shall that's we revisit the beer? I mean, it's pretty easy drinking. Yeah. It's not bad. I'd say regular Guinness is better. Yeah, same. But this ain't bad. Not bad. So, Guinness Dublin Porter. Yep. And the pizza is delicious. Pizza is goddamn good. Yummy. Oh, oh <laughs> my throat the way. Yes, so thank you, Joey, for the pizza. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.